So hello guys, it's three o'clock already, so let's get this started. And my name is Solus. I am representing Cloudvisor that is hosting today's webinar, uh, which will be focused on the new member of AWS, containerization services family, Amazon EKS Anywhere, and the most secure, reliable, and scalable way to run containers. Yose Hulala, as a speaker, will provide you exact information later on about this topic, and I am very happy to have him here and all of you joining this event, and I hope you will find it interesting and, of course, useful. And as usually, before we begin, let me deliver to you a brief introduction about Cloudvisor and what we do for those who haven't heard of us before. Cloudvisor is an advanced tier AWS partner which operating in the Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, three Baltic states. And we work closely with AWS to support current and new AWS users in our region. Our main business line is AWS resale that is being used by a number of companies in the Baltics. So if your company is currently using AWS, I strongly suggest uh, you to check uh, out the benefit packages that we offer as a bonus for your AWS spend. And moreover, we try to do a lot of things to build the local AWS community, and this webinar is a good example of that. So that is for now from my side. And if you feel curious, please visit our website and find out more. Before we begin our webinar, a few notes regarding the workflow of today's event. First of all, your questions are very welcome as usual and please submit them at the q a section or the chat and we will go through them during the workshop if there is a, if there is time or after the main part is done and secondly if you are afraid to miss any moment i can smooth you down because this event is being recorded and we will share it with everyone tomorrow so it's time to pass the screen to our today's speaker, Yuse Yuhala. Uh, did I say uh, correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, close enough. Yuse from Finland, welcome. Yes, thank you. Let me try to take the screen over. Okay. Hopefully you're seeing my screen at the moment. Yes, we can uh, see. Yes, my name is Jose Juhala and I work as a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. And uh, today we are going to go over our container services offering. And mainly we are focusing on the releases that happened at uh, reInvent 2020 and regarding the running containers in on-premises environment. So this means uh, ECS Anywhere, EKS Anywhere, and Amazon EKS Distro. And just to set some expectations for this session, uh, we are not going to have a deep dive into any of these. Most of these are still in the beta or just uh, coming out. So all of the details are not released yet. But we are going to have a broad overview of uh, what these services are and uh, what you can do with these in the future. Yeah, let's jump forward. And uh, why are customers at the moment looking at containers? And I think that uh, we all can agree that uh, just thinking back last year and with the situation with COVID, uh, customers and many companies are in a whole lot of different situation at the moment and their business has changed dramatically. So they need to reinvent themselves and in a fast pace. And uh, of course, this gives the companies a lot of new opportunities in this digital era that they are, but this also makes it hard for the development side and infrastructure side to keep up with this uh, change or demand of change uh, that the business gives to them. And this is why companies have started to look into containers as a way to 
deploy faster and still get the same kind of a secure and uh, reliable and stable infrastructure beneath them. And what kind of applications companies are currently looking into container platforms? And it's pretty much everything. We are seeing applications from uh, like mobile and web applications, which are like the standard ones that you see in container space but also backend web services, IoT, data processing are quite heavy use cases nowadays. Companies are also building shared services platforms, CICD, management and security tooling, and different kinds of things in this space to support their development. And also migrating their enterprise applications from virtual, virtual machines or bare metal servers into containers like .NET, classic applications, Linux applications, or pretty much any third-party applications. And also, one uh, interesting area is machine learning. Like with AWS, we have a, a range of uh, services that you can use to create your machine learning models. And with containers technologies, you can run those uh, wherever you want those models and do the inference, for example, in the edge or in the cloud. And currently for customers to run their containerized environments, AWS has two offerings for the control plane, and that is the ECS and EKS. And there are some differences between these and what companies are looking at. Uh, let's go through both of these and see what has happened uh, during the reInvent. So Amazon ECS, so Elastic Container Service, is an AWS opinionated way to run containers at scale. So meaning that uh, with ECS, which is our built-in solution for container uh, control plane, we enable customers to reduce the decisions that they need to do without sacrificing scale or features. So you can reduce the time from building and deploying and migration your applications to being in production with the ECS. So powerful and simple. And the new release with ECS is the ECS Anywhere. And uh, this is uh, playing the part here that, okay, previously you had the ECS to run in on AWS, but what about uh, if you wanted to run your containers or tasks somewhere else, but still benefit from the uh, simplicity of ECS? And the reasons why customers and uh, people have been looking into ECS Anywhere kind of solutions is that uh, they might have had their like CapEx investments already made. So they have their data centers, which they might have uh, servers, and they want to age out their infrastructure there. So utilize it uh, uh, until those are end of life. And they still want to have the same consistent operations experience that they have on cloud with ECS. So the simple and yet powerful experience. They also could have like compliance requirements or data gravity or proximity requirements, meaning that for example, in an environment, you have a factory or something where you need to have the operations or workloads close by the actual equipment. Or then there's compliance requirements from uh, like data residency issues that you need to have the data in a specific geographical area. And these are all things why customers are looking into running their containers on premises. And uh, previously, what you have had with the ECS uh, or Elastic Container Service, you have had three options to run your uh, data plane or where your tasks are running. And that has been done, if we start from the right hand side, the AWS Fargate plus ECS has been the most managed option to run your containers, where you only need to worry about uh, on your applications and how your tasks are configured. And AWS will handle all of the control plane and data plane for you. And the next thing that if you want to have a little bit more control and freedom that, okay, where your data plane is running and where your tasks are running, you have had ECS and EC2. So with EC2, you have been able to run those uh, tasks in uh, regions where you have wanted local zones or wavelengths. 
And also, if you have needed to have those in your own premises, you could have run that in AWS Outposts. And you have gotten the fully managed experience of the ECS then. But still, that uh, haven't given you the uh, possibility to use your existing hardware. And now with ECS Anywhere, we are enabling you to run those ECS tasks on your own virtual machines and bare metal servers. So in essence, you are getting the same consistent tooling and governance that you have gotten previously with the ECS, but now the task can be running in your own infrastructure and enabling you to manage your hybrid footprint a little bit better. And a few key tenets of the ECS Anywhere. So with ECS Anywhere, the control plane always remains in AWS Cloud. So meaning that only the uh, workloads that you are running or containers, those are running in your on-premises and uh, the ECS is still connecting to cloud to do uh, manage the control plane. Only the information for managing the tasks is sent to ECS control plane, uh, meaning like uh, host health, container activity and uh, container health checks. ECS Anywhere is infrastructure agnostic, so it is working on most compatible operating systems on VMs, bare metal, Raspberry Pis, and what have you. And uh, in these connected scenarios, ECS Anywhere will continue to run your tasks in the on-premises until it gets communicating communications back. Of course, uh, things like uh, scaling and managing of your tasks is not working because you don't have the connectivity but once that is up you will uh, be able to uh, control your tasks again and let's see how it works on a high level so what you have here is that uh, on aws side you have the control plane so amazon ecs and then on the right hand side you have your own data center and in your own data center what you do is that uh, you install an SSM agent, a uh, simple systems manager agent, onto your hardware or virtual machines. And those are connecting back to the AWS system manager. And after that, you're installing an ECS agent to those uh, virtual machines on your own data center. And what those are going to be doing is connecting back to Amazon ECS and uh, are represented as a, as a target where you can put your tasks mm -hmm. running. So you, are, you have the possibility to choose between, for example, Bargate or EC2 on AWS, or put some of the tasks to your on-premises with the same configuration and tooling. But yeah, that was the easiest side. But uh, then customers that have uh, wanted a little bit more flexibility and uh, wanted to be able to benefit from the uh, broad ecosystem and uh, APIs that Kubernetes offers them, but still haven't wanted to manage all of the Kubernetes control plane and infrastructure themselves, they have been looking into EKS, so our Elastic Kubernetes service. And why customers have loved Amazon EKS is that uh, even though ECS is built in or built by AWS and deeply integrated to our services, so is EKS. So with EKS, you can still connect to most of the AWS services running on Amazon on AWS. You can connect to VPC and everything, and but you still get the flexibility of Kubernetes and getting your own components in there. And with also running Amazon EKS, you get the security and compliance by AWS. So we're making sure that the environment where you are running your workloads is secure and compliant and uh, reliable. So a couple things about uh, Amazon EKS. Uh, AWS does not modify the Kubernetes. So we are with Amazon EKS, we are running an upstream and certified conformant version of Kubernetes uh, with backported security fixes. We also support four different versions of Kubernetes. 
So giving you a time to upgrade your environment in a timely manner so that you have time to do the rollout upgrades to new versions. And our aim is to, with Amazon EKS just to make the Kubernetes operations and administration and management simple and boring. So you don't have to worry about the undifferentiated heavy lifting that goes on with uh, running Kubernetes. And you can uh, start focusing on your actual applications. So what this means in essence is that uh, Amazon or with Amazon EKS, we are handling the Kubernetes testing. For example, when there are new versions coming out of Kubernetes, we are going through those, making checks and making sure that it's reliable and secure. We are doing the control plane monitoring for you and also giving you an uptime and SLA for these clusters. Of course, meaning that there are some requirements like uh, how many nodes there are running and so forth so that we can keep these. We are also making sure that uh, your clusters are secure so that all of the security patches have been installed to those and also that the configurations of your uh, clusters are packed up. So doing the uh, ETCD backups. And what is left for you is actually focus on the applications. So figuring out how you want to configure your applications and for example, how your GitOps pipelines works and how, what kind of a developer and uh, operator experience you have there. And also thinking the connectivity patterns, how you want to connect your customers to your applications or how you want to connect back to your on-premises infrastructure or any other AWS services. So we are handling the tactical operations underneath and you get to focus on the strategic operations. And with EKS, what we have now, if we start uh, from the right hand side with the Amazon EKS and AWS Fargate, this is again the most managed option that you can get where the control plane, compute, data plane and support are all handled by AWS. And what you need to worry about is the cluster configurations and applications that you are running on top of it. The next thing, if you want to have a little bit more control with your environment, is the Amazon EKS and Amazon EC2. Like with the ECS uh, service, now here the AWS is worrying about the control plane, compute, and the support. And uh, what is left for you is the data plane. So you make sure that the instances are up and running and patched, and there are, for example, enough capacity with the scaling groups. And currently, if you have wanted to run your workloads or pods in your on-premises infrastructure, you have been able to do that with AWS Outposts. So running EC2 on the Outpost infrastructure. But still, this has left a little bit gap on the left-hand side. And customers have been asking from us that, what about self-managed clusters? Customers might have had uh, custom tooling and configuration that they have wanted to use. Or customers might have been in the process of migrate, migrating their Kubernetes applications to AWS or just migrating their infrastructure to AWS and wanted to, wanted to have something in between so that they can, for example, modernize their applications already on, in their on-premises infrastructure before they migrate over or they can have unique hardware and compute requirements, or they just want to manage their uh, Kubernetes clusters themselves on Amazon EC2, for example. And for this, uh, we launched a couple of new things in uh, reInvent 2020. So the first one is EKS Distro, which is already available today. And uh, what EKS Distro gives you is the version patching and security alignment with Amazon EKS. So meaning that you can run the exact same versions of Kubernetes and the components that are running in Amazon EKS. And then the EKS Anywhere, which is coming estimated later this year, uh, which provides you a little bit more tooling in the form of cluster creation and lifecycle management uh, that is built on top of uh, EKS Distro. So these are the two new options that you have. 
One is available today and one is uh, coming later. And let's go through each of these and starting from the EKS distro and what you can get with this and what it actually means. So what it is EKS distro? As I mentioned, uh, EKS distro is, uh, is based on the same Kubernetes components that are run in Amazon EKS and will be powering the EKS anywhere. So same version of Kubernetes and the uh, different components that are run there. You will also get the security patches, tooling and configs that will also be adopted by the upstream. You will get the backport fixes to versions that are supported by Amazon EKS and versions that might not anymore be supported by the upstream. But if those are supported by EKS, then it's supported by EKS distro also. These uh, components and versions are validated to be reliable and secure. As mentioned previously in the slides, uh, we take a lot of testing to actually make sure that Amazon EKS is uh, reliable and secure for you to run your workloads in. So because you're running the same versions in Amazon EKS distro, you get the same benefits as with Amazon EKS. Also, if you need to be sure that, okay, what is running in your infrastructure, for example, compliance reasons, you are able to reproduce the same exact uh, EKS distro builds that uh, you get with EKS distro. So all of the tooling uh, and environment variables are published as an open source for you. So you can build everything if you want yourself. And the next question that uh, has been asked is that is Amazon EKS distro a fork of upstream Kubernetes? And the simple answer here is no, it is not a fork. Uh, we are calling it EKS distro because we think that it best matches what uh, it is. So we are distributing the same components that we are using with Amazon EKS to you. So it is not a fork, it's uh, based on the upstream Kubernetes. And what is actually included in the EKS distro? So there is upstream Kubernetes, etcd, at etcd CTL. Then there is a core DNS, upstream CNI, and CSI sidecar container. So these are the things that are included in the Kubernetes uh, EKS distro. And things that, for example, are not included in the EKS distro are EKS CTL, AWS has official Kubernetes plugins, CNI and CSI, or Amazon controllers for Kubernetes ACK. So we are not bundling everything together in the EKS distro. So not everything for every use case, but the things that you need to build your Kubernetes cluster. And we are basically expecting you to bring in the rest of the things or components that you need for your applications and for your environment. Some additional release details. All of the container images are based on Amazon Linux 2, except the core DNS, which is based on Scratch. Container images come in AMD64, ARM64, and AMD64 multi-platform OCI images. And AWS will provide uh, manifest files for releases formatted as Kubernetes CRD also. And there are multiple ways how you can get the EKS distro. So you can get it from the GitHub repository or you can build it yourself with that one. You can get it from our public uh, ECR repositories and some of the artifacts you can get from uh, our public S3 buckets. Or then you can build it yourself and for example, get it from your private ECR repositories. And from the start, we have been planning that, okay, we need uh, partners to partner with this EKS distro. And there are multiple partners that you can use already from the start. And there are a lot of uh, blog posts that you can go through. And the one example here for the partners is Weaveworks and the Weave Kubernetes platform that has integrated EKS distro uh, into their platform. And you can leverage that to build your EKS cluster. Also, if you go into the EKS distro GitHub repository, you find there, for example, tooling 
and scripts for Kubernetes operations, COPS, that uh, with few modifications of uh, parameters, you can create your own uh, EKS distro cluster, for example, running on AWS. And there are also different and other open source tools that you can use, like QPDM and uh, different uh, Linux distributions also have tools to deploy your EKS cluster. Next, let's hop on to the Amazon EKS Anywhere. So to go a little bit forward and how you can actually start managing those EKS distro clusters later on. So why EKS Anywhere? And the scenarios are somewhat the same as with the ECS Anywhere. So customers want to leverage their existing investments and infrastructure. They might have governance reasons why they need to have their workloads running in their on-premises infrastructure, like uh, regulatory reasons or data residency requirements. And these are pretty much the same, same issues or challenges. But uh, it could also be that some customers have had challenges that uh, they are running their Kubernetes environment on Amazon with Amazon EKS and then their self-managed cluster in their on-premises infrastructure. And they want to get away with, of that uh, complexity of running Kubernetes with different tooling. Mm -hmm. Or they just want to reduce the costs or overhead of managing multiple environments or making sure that the Kubernetes environment, for example, and the versions that they are running are safe and secure and reliable and want to get that as a service. So what EKS Anywhere gives to you is the possibility to create and operate Kubernetes clusters in your own data center and on your existing hardware and with getting the same consistent EKS experience. So EKS Anywhere helps customers run a secure and stable Kubernetes environment with tested components on their infrastructure. EKS Anywhere is built on open source standards and also bundled with the different components to accelerate your readiness for production clusters. So be able to run a production environment faster. And as mentioned, you can bring in your existing hardware with EKS Anywhere. And some of the use cases uh, where we have been talking with customers and uh, what customers have been uh, interested about are, for example, training the ML models on cloud, for example, with our native tooling like SageMaker, and then being able to run those anywhere. So for example, running those uh, on cloud with the Amazon EKS, and then running those on premises with uh, EKS anywhere. And also the workload migration to AWS. Many customers have wanted to have some kind of a middle step when migrating to AWS, already mo modernizing their applications in on-premises and then doing the actual migration to AWS. Or it might be data sovereignty issue, being close by to a geographical region or the workload that is using those applications. Or well, then there is uh, a lot of these seasonal uh, solutions or applications that have need to burst on a seasonal basis. And now with the same tooling and methods where you can use the EKS anywhere with uh, Amazon EKS, you are able to more easily burst to AWS when needed. And let's talk a little bit about key principles that we had when building EKS anywhere. And the first one is the consistent tooling. So we wanted the customers to have the same operational experience across on-premises and cloud. So meaning, starting from the bottom, uh, it shouldn't matter that uh, if you're running on on-premises or cloud or your virtual machine or EC2, you can have the EKS Istro in all of these. And that is the unifying layer. And then the EKS distro can be powering either EKS Anywhere and EKS Cloud, which are then both connecting back to the EKS dashboard on the AWS Management Console. So this really gives you the 
same unified experience of running uh, EKS, regardless of where you are running it. You get the same. Uh, you can use the same deployment tools. You can get the same observability, and can benefit from the same security tooling on premises and on cloud. And open source as the second principle. So we are really wanted to like uh, double down our commitment with uh, to Kubernetes open source community and doing that with EKS anywhere. And uh, starting with EKS distro that is based on the upstream Kubernetes, all the way to the Kubernetes components that we plan to ship as part of our tooling. And EKS Anywhere tooling will be made available as an open source to give back to the Kubernetes community and bring also our engineering strength and efforts to the table. And the third principle uh, was GitOps driven. So meaning that uh, customers uh, or EKS Anywhere will provide the customers the possibility to use Git as their central uh, repository or a single point source of truth for their EKS cluster desired state. And there are three key benefits of uh, having GitOps driven approach is the unique and consistent experience for cluster creation, management and operations across all of your EKS environments. And this really reduces the complexity and operations costs associated with running multiple environments. So running in cloud and on premises. You will also get a stronger and secure, more stronger security and compliance by using Git to centrally define those policies that are enforceable by audit tracing. And also you can increase the developer velocity by enabling cluster operators, security admins and developers to better collaborate with this kind of a self-service experience. So using EKS Anywhere, uh, customers will benefit from the same consistent and repeatable model across uh, uh, AWS Cloud and on-premises. And let's have a look into the EKS Anywhere architecture. So we are implementing basically a shared uh, responsibility model with this because the control plane and the data plane are both running on customer infrastructure. And we plan to support both bare metal and VMware vSphere installations on top of customer mines infrastructure. So basically, you provide the physical servers or virtual nodes that are connected to each other with the layer two connection. And then the EKS Anywhere will overlay on top of that. You can bring your own node operating system, or you can leverage one of the bundled offerings with EKS Anywhere. And once a cluster is created, the entire EKS operational experience is, will be Git driven and consistent across on premises and AWS. So there is going to be a Git controller running each on, on each of these clusters that allows customers to version control and manage their desired state. And with EKS Anywhere, we will, it will ship with an installer and a command line interface and a local API to, for you to be able to create the cluster, EKS Anywhere cluster. And uh, there is going to be optional defaults. That installation itself is going to be an opinionated installation. So there are optional defaults like node operating system, container runtime, ingress, storage classes, and observability. And with these defaults or uh, pre-configured defaults, we think that customers will benefit from the reduced complexity in the cluster configuration uh, associated with creating it and operating in their own environment. But you are still able to customize any part of the EKS Anywhere installation by bringing in your own components that you want to use. And we also want to make it easy to use EKS Anywhere with AWS services like AppMess, push logs and metrics into AWS for observability, uh, perform cluster backups and snapshots to Amazon S3 buckets, run cluster cost management and uh, optimization tools, 
and also run compliance checks and uh, audit trail reporting and uh, configuration policy enforcement, for example, with AWS Config. There are three options how you can run your uh, EKS Anywhere cluster regarding connection. So there is a fully connected or partially connected option. And the connectivity to AWS will be provided by a cluster agent that is running in your uh, EKS Anywhere cluster and connecting securely back to AWS and integrated with the AWS identity provider. And if you have a scenario where you need to run in a disconnected scenario, or you know that there's going to be a lot of disconnects, then you can leverage the EKS distro and, for example, any open source tools that you want to manage the cluster. And to be able to run these uh, efficiently and well, and uh, you can leverage our premium support for this to get access to 24 7 support engineers that work alongside with your infrastructure engineers to keep your systems up and running. You can run uh, well architected reviews to your environments to make sure that everything is ready and ready to handle your mission critical workloads. And you also get access to Amazon EKS subject matter experts to support you. And also you can benefit from the rich partner ecosystem who can help you in managing your EKS Anywhere clusters all the way from start to production. And with these couple of new releases, where we are now. So the right hand side is the same. You still have the fully managed options with what we think that, uh, that customers will benefit with the most to running everything with the Amazon EKS and the control plane and everything managed. But if you want to have a possibility to run in your own infrastructure, then there are new, two new things, the Amazon EKS Anywhere, where the control plane, compute and data plane is uh, managed by you in your own infrastructure and the support is provided by AWS. And the Amazon EKS distro, where you can control yourself, everything you want. And what next? Well, there are like, uh, at the moment, the EKS distro is already available. So you can start uh, trying that out, going into the documentation of, on Amazon Basics, or going to the GitHub repository and getting all of the uh, documentation, codes, and everything from there, and the scripts, for example, for COPS. And with EKS Anywhere, there is uh, our own documentation page that you can be looking at. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jose. It was quick. Yeah, most likely. There's still like uh, <clears throat> many of these things with uh, ECS Anywhere and EKS Anywhere are not yet to be released. So not possible to go very deep into technical details, mm -hmm. but an overview of how we can use those. Yes, definitely. Maybe the attendees have questions right now because it's, it's about time to, to provide your questions. Sometimes you need to, you know, lay down, uh, to get laid down your information and <laughs> maybe there will be some questions later on and I hope uh, it is possible to reach you uh, say uh, in our uh, Slack channel. Yeah, Are you most there? definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm on the Slack channel, so mm -hmm. the user group channel. And uh, yes, feel free to contact me there. I will be, for example, today. I will be there. So if you have any questions, feel free later on and drop me a line. So mm -hmm. that is definitely a possibility. Yes. Uh, the, the link I just dropped the link at our chat section. How to find our our Slack channel. And if you have questions on the spot, uh, I have few questions to Jose. Um, which containerization service from AWS portfolio is your favorite one and why? Uh, well, I think that the, still I'm going with the ECS and Fargate, just because that is like very straightforward. I don't have to worry about 
the control plane myself, still working like from the AWS side. I can just focus on the applications and uh, just make sure that those are up and running and working as they should be. But yeah, I still think that uh, as with the EKS and the ECS anywhere, there are things where it is where it is good to have those close to your, for example, factories, or if you have those different reasons why you need that uh, workloads to be close by, there is definitely a place for those also. Mm, thank you. And one more question. How do you see the containerization and Kubernetes developing in the future? Uh, do you think more users will shift to managed services or so maybe running your own Kubernetes will gain even more popularity? Yeah, I think so. Like uh, after the launches that we made in the reInvent, reInvent 2020, uh, these, for example, EKS Anywhere and ECS Anywhere also has gotten a lot of traction and customers have been asking for those. And many customers still want to have that managed experience. So there are companies that are very well suited to run their own uh, Kubernetes infrastructure, but still that is like the undifferentiated heavy lifting that many don't want to do and want to have that more managed version of it or just to benefit from the like the testing and uh, regarding the security and reliability that we do. Mm. So yeah, I, I still see that the containers in many cases are the place where many, many companies are going. Thank you. And if there are no more questions from the audience, I have one more question to you, sir. Is it springtime in Finland already? <laughs> Well, yeah, it's raining <laughs> and it's gray. I think it's spring, spring here, but uh, hopefully it's, it starts to like, uh, sun starts to shine a little bit yeah. later on this week. Sun starts to shine and, and, and the, the weather is, is warmer and, and we have about six or seven plus yeah. degrees and it, 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 you know, provides good mood to us. And now it's about time to participate, dear attendees, at our Paul, because we would like to, to get the feedback from you and we will be very, very appreciated. And if you, if you answer a few short questions at the poll section, you already see uh, those questions on the screen. Just, we need uh, your opinion. Was it good? Was it very good? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's always yes, uh, good to yes, know uh, that, okay. How was it for you? Was it good for you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It would be great to actually be able to share a little bit more that, okay, what's going on with the, for example, EKS anywhere and what are the exact technical specs. But at the moment, that is unfortunately not yet the, not yet the situation, but uh, coming later this year. So then we will be able to dive a little bit like uh, deeper into these topics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I see, while everyone is submitting their answers, I would like uh, once again to invite everyone to join the AWS Community Baltics channel on Slack. Uh, the link you will find at the chat section. And uh, one more thing. Um, I'd like to invite you to participate at our next event, uh, which will be organized next week. It, it is pretty soon. Uh, it's, it's not usual <laughs> after one week. And uh, because this event was inspired by recent accident with data leaking of car sharing company CTV, the Lithuanians and noticed this company pretty, pretty well. And, and there is a link of this event as well at the chat section. And, and of course, we will, we will give you more details later then. So Jose, if there anything to add, I'd like to, to thank you once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for participating. And uh, as mentioned, I will be in the Slack channel and uh, don't have any like plans to go away from there. So please drop me a link uh, or question if you, if you have something. Thank you very much. So see, see you if, if, if there will be the need <laughs> at the Slack channel. And meanwhile, it's like uh, that's wrap of today's event. And thank you everyone for attending. Uh, looking forward to meeting you 
uh, in another Cloudvisor event next week, as it was already mentioned. And now um, let's see the, the poll results. Yulus, could you please share the results? Yeah, um, I have shared those uh, already before. So. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I guess we can wrap it up now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks very much and see you then. Thank you. Bye. Bye.